Hey logical people, GKB here. At the end of today's tutorial, you will learn how to build an app in React Next.js using Bootstrap where you will design your own navigation bar and how to log in a user with a click of a button using Firebase. And once the user is logged in, we're going to show them a different nav navigation bar, of course. Uh, you can move from home page to profile page, for example. You can update your profiles like that and it will change the data in real time. Even better, like that update here in the real time and in the database in real time last but not least when user log out they will navigate back to home page and then even if they try they cannot go to home page until and unless they are logged in so without further ado let's get started all right logical people officially welcome to firebase real time database and in this tutorial we're going to quickly cover everything that you need to know in order to read from the database write to the database update anything to the database and lastly maybe if you want to delete something from the database okay we're going to start building upon the previous video where we learned about how to use firebase for user authentication and we're going to continue from the same project and then we're going to build upon and we want to learn we will create a brand new navbar where we will see um, differences in the navbar depending upon if user is logged in or not. Subsequently, we're gonna change a couple of things. We're gonna do a lot of cleaning in our previous project so that it's more robust and usable in terms of setting up our project. Once we do that, we're gonna write some data to the real time database. Then we will read data from the real time database, of course. Then I'm gonna update the database, delete from the database, and then we're gonna go through one bonus. Okay, so make sure that you watch the entire video. I am back to my Visual Studio. I'm gonna click on Terminal, click on New Terminal, and I'm gonna start my server. I'm gonna say npm run dev like that. Now, um, if you remember, the app that we want to build looks something like this, which definitely means I'm using Bootstrap. So let's quickly install Bootstrap in our project. The way we do that is super simple. You can just go to Google and type Bootstrap 5. Click on the first link, click on the home, and here you should find a command using npm. So I'm gonna copy this. I'm going to paste it here and before we press enter I would also like to grab bootstrap icons and the way to do that is super simple click on the icons and then basically copy this okay so bootstrap icons like that what I'm going to say I'm going to say please install bootstrap and icons minus minus save so that it's saved in my dependencies if you're not sure how all this works please go through the playlist I created where I explain everything in detail how bootstrap work how to install it and things like that beautiful so everything is installed i'm gonna close this and our server should be up and running so if i refresh the page and if you remember this is where i left you in the last video i'm gonna close all of this so the first thing that we need to do is we need to initialize bootstrap so let's do that i am on underscore app tsx and i'm gonna import two dependencies one for bootstrap css and next one for bootstrap icons and i'm gonna also use use effect hook to import the javascript of bootstrap like that beautiful going back nothing should change because although we have included the dependency but we have not used it in the project now before jumping into you know designing the app let's quickly go back to my favorite tool of course so what we want to do is we want to have a website on that website we want to have a header inside the header we want to have app logo and we want to have a login button like that and then probably at the center, we want to have some text like this. So this is our default window when user is not logged in. And when user is logged in, we want to have one more button and that's it. So that would be our default app. Of course, you can build upon it as much as you like, but this is something the minimum that we want to do. So let's first go and see how we can design a nav bar. So I'm going to go to bootstrap, of course. I will go to components and I, then I will navigate to navbar. Again, if you're not sure what bootstrap is, how things work, please go and refer to this video and you, you will know everything that you need to know about bootstrap. I'm going to click on responsive behavior and then I'm going to copy this navbar. So this is what I want to see. Now uh, here, I'm going to create a new folder. You know the drill, I'm going to call it components like that. Inside this, I'm going to create a new file. I'm going to call it navbar.tsx. And I'll say const navbar. It will take some props, and we're going to talk about what these props are in a moment. And we'll say return 
this. So whatever we copy it, I'm gonna paste it, and then I'm gonna replace class equals with class name. Like that we don't need this form for sure. And this could be tab index like this. And then we save it. Nice. Now let's see if we can how we can use this. I'm gonna say export default bar like that. And in my and on my index page, I'm just gonna say navbar like that. I'm gonna save it and then I'll go to localhost and now I've got the navbar. Nice. This is what we need. This looks good. Now let's make a couple of changes in our navbar. Um, I'm going to create two functions. So I'll say font const, and this should return everything that we have here, basically. I cut everything. I'm going to paste it here. And then I'm going to go into the navbar, and I'm going to change a couple of things. For example, I want this navbar to be dark. So I'll just say bg dark and text light of course margin from the bottom should be three that is first thing first then i'm gonna go here and i'm gonna delete everything and here i would like to just have one link right so something that says so oh, hi this is our app so i'm gonna use the link provided by next needs to be imported like this i'm gonna say link ref this should go to home page always and this should be a button inside it type should be button I'll say my awesome app, and we're gonna give it a couple of classes so it looks good. So I'm gonna say this is a button, and this is a button outline light version of it, and I want it to be small, and I want I want margin from the left side. Save it, go back, and before going back, we would like to call this function. So here we're gonna say like this. Like this, beautiful. And now let's create the login button. So I'll say div class name. Um, I just want some margin from the end. So I'll just say five for example. And I'll say login with Google like that. So if you remember, we created this component in the last video, where at the end we will get a button where it will say login with Google. So if we go back and see, this looks good. But let's give some give it some styling. So here, since we have bootstrap now, we can say last name. This needs to be a button, button outline light, and we need button as a small button, like that. So if we save it, if we go back, now we see both the buttons are ready. And probably we can create some message on the on the index page. And after the nav bar, I would like to say div last name as container. And here within the h1 i could say hello world and i could say in h4 maybe login to continue like that now if i go back i should see this uh, let's give it some styling so that it looks good i'll say bg like this now this looks good we can also give some sort of classes to each Element. So let's try and do that quickly. I'll say margin from bottom as three, and text color should be green like that. And maybe for this as well, I'll say text as muted. Okay, I like it. So now this looks much better. Let's remove everything that we are not using here. Nice. I click on login with Google. I am at the home page, but the home page doesn't look good, and the reason is that this nav bar is only called within the index page and we technically want that this nav bar should be called on every page right so what we're going to do in the component folder we're going to create a new folder and we'll call sorry we're going to create a new file uh, and we'll call it layout like that and within layout we're going to do a couple of things so bear with me you want to say const layout and here we would like to say return we would like to return we will return a nav bar for logged in user and not logged in user. To do that, we will first need to know if user is logged in. So we'll say const auth equals to use 
Firebase auth like that. And now we're gonna check auth.user if this exists. Then I want to call navbar navbar and I'm gonna pass a couple of props to it. So I'm gonna say is logged in. This will be true because we are test we are already testing if this exists. And I'm gonna pass another prop to it. I'm gonna say auth equals to auth like that. And I'm gonna also say if user does not exist, well in that case just you know false. And we don't we don't need to pass any auth here. <clears throat> so that's first thing first. So this is this will make sure that whenever we call layout, we will have a nav bar. Okay. So if I export this export another thing that we want on this layout is it should have some height so i'm gonna say main and i'll say style and with the style i'm gonna say min height 100 percent visual height so the, the height of this main tag should be at least this this much and probably i'll give it some style i'll say class name and i'll say margin from top as one beautiful and within this main, we will say props dot children, and of course uh, layout will accept props like this. So the way flow will work is um, so before we go and explain the flow, let's have a look how we use this. I'm gonna copy this. I'm gonna go to app here. Before returning components, I would like to return something like this. I will say layout, right? And then I'm gonna cut everything. I'll paste it here like this. What we are saying is on the main app, first return the layout component and then everything else should be a child of layout component. Okay. So when we do this, what happens is when we go to the layout component, the layout component first it will return, it will render a nav bar depending upon if user is logged in or not. And then it's gonna render every child that was passed as a prop like this. So now if I go back to the home page, now you will see something like this. So even if I log out, you will see something like this. We are seeing two nav bars. That is because on the index page we are calling it explicitly. So I'm gonna remove this. And now we have only one nav bar. Nice. Click on login and voila. Now we are on a home page, but we see the same navigation bar, and we're gonna update that in a moment. But that's how the flow works. Okay. Now if we go back to our layout, we are saying that we are calling the nav bar with two props but we are never reading these props in the nav bar so let's first try and grab those items so here i'm gonna say const auth equals to props dot auth if it is provided otherwise auth is gonna be null like that and then it now it becomes super simple i'm gonna copy this function it here and now we will say return this when user is logged in like that and within the return statement we're going to make a couple of changes so here we will say if auth exists so if it, if it is not null then get a nav bar where user is logged in otherwise if user is not logged in then get a nav bar where user is not logged in like that so now the nav bar will either return this or that and within these functions we have our uh, navigation bar like this so for not logged in we are good to go but for the logged in version we need to make a couple of changes so let's copy this all of this and we'll see how it works so i'll paste it here we don't need the form and we can update classes with class name like this we also don't need the disabled button so it's okay Lovely. Now, if we go here, we see home and link. Let's quickly update these things. Replace this anchor with link. And link needs to be imported from next like this. And we're gonna change the next link as profile like that. So it looks something like this. Now you might be wondering how this, how does these icons appear? Well, that's super simple. We just went to Bootstrap. Click on icons. Then go here. I'm gonna search for 
boom and i found this i'm going to click on it copy the icon paste it here and i'm going to call it home and this should be class name like that go back becomes home and this becomes profile beautiful so if we go back to bootstrap on the navy nav bar with this style i'm going to copy this section because the span section actually floats to the right side of the nav bar and that's what we want like this if i save it go back this should say the text now instead of text we would like to have a button so i'll say button and classes of course button and button outline then small of course and here we'll say log out like this need a light one now we got the uh, logout button it doesn't do anything as of now so let's tell it to do something we'll say on click on click we're gonna create an anonymous function and within that function we're gonna call logout function like that and you should remember that auth is coming from the prop and auth is provided by layout like this and eventually this auth is coming from firebase and within the firebase we should remember that we return three things user loading and logout so basically calling this function from the navbar button like this okay now if i go back click here i will log out i can't go back to the home page i can click on google and i will be able to log in like that um let's give a quick icon to it so i'm going to go back to bootstrap icons and i'll look for i know and i'll copy this go back to navbar and paste it here and call it logout and then we'll call it class name like that beautiful so it looks nice so navbar is completed we're going to save it now let's go back to home page and i'm going to technically delete everything let's go to index page and copy this class paste it here and we'll say welcome back because you are logged in welcome back but we would also like to see the name of the user right i mean it just saying welcome back doesn't do justice so with that what we can say we can say const user get me user from use firebase hook that we created and now here we could say user dot display name like this and now it says welcome back it's okay to be logical beautiful similarly i'm going to go to profile page and here we'll do some cleanup so i'm going to copy this there's something wrong because this should be going to the home page so now let's go back to index page first and let's fix a couple of things right now it's not returning user back to home page if user is logged in and that's the behavior we want so we need three things we would need router so const router equals to use router hook like that and we would need um user comma loading from use firebase hook like that and we'll say if loading so if if it's still figuring out if user is logged in or not we're going to return loading please wait then we're going to check if user exists so if it's not null then we'll say router dot push and we should be sent back to home page like that now we are welcome back and it's okay to be logical home page profile page home page nice going back to profile page again on the profile page we would like to see two things we would like to we'll create one row and within that row we will have the user avatar and user bio and here we will give a box to update the bio and here we're going to click give a button to update the bio okay so back to profile page let's delete this we're going to create a div write a class name of row we'll give it some margin from the top and we will give it some background so i'll say bg opacity of 50% maybe like this and here we will say image image needs to be imported from next like this 
within the image we need to pass a couple of items so we'll say class name as then we need to provide a source now the image source will come from user photo url like that so we are saying hey show us an image if image is not available just show us this name okay so that's our first row and this should be wrapped into a column of course so we'll say div class name as column like this now this is going to give us some error and we will see what that error is which says unhandled runtime invalid source prop this url that we are using so we are saying that hey please please get the user image from this url but for the security reasons, um, Next.js does not understand this and it says we need to configure our Next.js file in order to read data from this external URL. So let's see how we can do that. So here is our next config.js. Right now it's not doing much. Here I'm going to delete this and I'm going to say this is a function now instead of a constant. And inside this I'm going to say const common settings like that. And I'll say images. And I'll say domain. What, what domain do we need? Uh, we got that error here, so let's copy that. And we can paste it here like this. And we'll say, and then within this function, we will return a dictionary. And we'll say everything that is there in the common settings. And now, since we are changing next config, let's bring our env data here. So I'm going to say env as dot 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 firebase config we have not created this constant so let's do that i'm going to go to firebase in it and i will copy everything we'll come back to config paste it here okay, delete this right now let's give it a name so instead of saying api key we will say firebase api key Lovely. Now, since we have done this, now we can go to Fire, Firebase in it. And instead of hard coding everything, now we can read it from the environment variable like this. So, the way we created the keys, we said Firebase API key. And the, the way to read it is process. So, it's a global variable provided by next. Within that process variable, there's an env key. And that key can be found here, for example. And after that key, we have got the API key, we got the domain key, and so on. Okay, beautiful. I'm gonna save it and I'm gonna stop the server and then we have to restart it because the configuration file has changed and now it needs to be loaded again. Now, if we go back to our profile page and refresh it, voila, we got the profile image that I uploaded in the Google for this particular email ID. Lovely. What else do we want? Well, if we go back, we also want a user bio, but we have not, we don't know where this user bio should come in, right? And this is where we will dive into and understand how do we write data to Firebase real time database. Now, here on the left side menu, I'm going to click on real time database. On the real-time database, we would like to create a new database. I'm going to click on create database button. It's going to ask me for database location. You can keep it default, whatever comes up. Click on next. There's a security rule. Um, you could start with a test mode. Good. So click on enable. And just like that, you have a new brand new database. So now let's go to Google and we'll say Firebase to Firebase documentation, um, not this one, here. So now in the documentation, they'll explain us how to read or write to the database. And it's fairly simple. First, we need to get this database item from Firebase. So let's copy that and let's import this in our profile like this. And they are saying, now create a constant saying database, okay? that we will do and then saying to write on the database we need to get the database which is fine then we need to find a reference on that database and then we need to find a node on the database once you find all of this you could just use the set function to write 
any JavaScript object back to the database. It looks a little bit complex, but it's actually fairly simple. So let's try and implement this ourselves and then we'll see how this is done. So I'm back to profile page. And let's create a couple of placeholder items so that we are able to interact with the database. I'll say div class name as row. Margin prop from top is four. And I want everything to be centered. So I'll say deflex content center. If you don't know what this class is, you can easily go to Google and look how to center div, how to center items within a div using Bootstrap, and you should find that class. Class name. We need a column which should be of size seven whenever the screen is bigger than medium or equal to medium for that matter. Okay. Now quickly go back to Bootstrap, and I'm I, what I want is a couple of forms. So I'll go to um, input groups, and I want this this text area. So I'll copy all this. Come here and paste it. Change class to class names like that and save it. Now, if I go back to my local host, now I have a text area and I can write something. And whatever we write here, we would like this to go back to the database. There is a button. Type, of course, is button. And we'll say on click. Handle. We have not created this function. We're going to create this in a moment. And we'll just say simply update profile. Like that. Let's give it some classes so it looks nice. Class name it should be button, button of access type, margin from top, and a medium screen should be three. Otherwise, we just want margin to be one. And let's create this function. So we will say like that. Now we have a button. When we click on it, it should update whatever we write here to the database. Okay. So let's quickly do that. So going back to the documentation, we need to create a constant like this. So let's do that. Now it's saying that we need to find a reference on the database. So let's first, you know, import everything. Now to get the reference, let's try and do it in a much more manageable way. So we will say const db reference. This should be equal to ref, the function we just imported. And that function needs the database and the name, or let's say pointer on the database. So I'm going to create a I'm going to create a constant and I'm going to define it here. I'm going to say const this should be equal to user. Sorry, I want it to be dynamic. So I'll say user and then I want user dot UID. So what we're saying is this. This is my app. From my app, we can get a database that is running on Google. So this is Google. So from my app, get a get me the database that I created. So that is the database, right? Then create a reference to one of the tables inside the database. If if you may, if you want to understand it that way, and that's all we are saying right now. That this is my DB, and then we are saying create a ref within that DB, and it should point to a particular database inside that DB. Okay, so we did that. What this this means is that inside that database, we will create another table called user, and it will give it a new ID. And once we complete this, you will understand what this means. What I will say, I will say log. I'm gonna log this reference. And I'll say const. And I'll say new user details should be equal to. It should be a bio, and we'll get the new bio. And we'll say new bio. Maybe a password if you want to. I mean, you can put anything you like actually. I don't know, like this. And then once we have the database, once we have the reference pointer. To the table in the database, we want to say set set something to this reference of database, and that something is new user details like this. And all of this asynchronous task, and it could fail, so we would wrap everything into try and catch because something could go wrong, right? Okay, so with this, we should be able to update our database with this constant value. Not reading anything from this text yet, but we will do that in a moment. Press Control Shift I. We will open a console and we're also going to say log to the console and we'll say this, like that. Now, if we go back here and we click on update profile, it says success. And within our database, we should got a new node. So let's go to Firebase, go to console. And now in the Firebase real time database, you should see a new node, which is users. And within that users, you've got a new user. So whatever user ID is provided to that particular user. And now we've got address, bio, premium, and new password.
isn't that beautiful that you did not have to take care of any complexity at all and everything was figured out for you by google and just just so you know that this is the user that you have you can go to authentication and you can see how many people have logged in using this sign in feature and here's a unique id that google provides to every user and that's what you see here as well lovely so now let's see how we can update the bio a little bit more dynamically now this is nothing to do with firebase this is more about react concepts i'm going to go a little quicker here i'm going to say const biotr ref equals to use ref use the use ref hook copy this and i'm going to say dot current dot value whatever this biorefs current value is put it inside that and then i'm going to bind it so i'm going to put it to this text area so i'll say ref equals to biotrf like that i'm going to log the whole object with success so that we know whatever what we are sending to the database so we forgot a comma I refresh everything now we got now we got details here i'm going to clear the console i'm going to say this is my bio click on update and success and all this data was sent to the database now let's confirm that and it says this is my bio lovely this is how you write to real time database now let's see how we can read this so to read this data what i would like to have is on the on the page when you are at a home page and you come to profile page i would like to see the bio and the details here okay so let's see how we can do that say const get updated user and here i'll say try because things could go wrong i'll say const db equals to get database like that and i'll say const db ref that needs to be ref of course you so either you want to write or you want to read you want you need to tell the tell the pointer from where do you want to read or write the data so once you have this i'm going to say on value it needs the so on value function needs a reference so we will say db reference and then it needs a callback function so i'm going to create an anonymous function and it provides a snapshot what a snapshot means is at that moment whenever you click on that button whenever you call this function at that moment whatever was the snapshot or whatever the value of uh, this reference was it will be provided to this variable and what i want to say i want to say set user details to a state variable we have not created this as of now we will create that in a moment and that's how we get the data out of this, this snapshot and if something went wrong then you know what needs to do we need to patch it and we'll just say log here for time being and here let's create const user details and we'll say set user details user state and initially this will be a blank like that since we have created this let's use that variable so next to this image i will create another column and I'll just probably say on a medium size screen, give it a width of seven. And instead of having an image, I would like to say, give me a paragraph. And I will say user details if that exists. Give me the bio, or just say bio not available. Maybe I also want the address. Because why not? I save it, and if I go back, it says bio not available, address not available. That's because we have not called this function. And it's not able to update this particular state. So how can we do that? That should be super simple. We're gonna say the use effect because we want to update because we want to update the state variable whenever the user changes. And when this happens, we would just like to call this function like this. Now if we go back, we should say this is my bio and this is Toronto. I could say, hey, this is my latest bio. And this is how we also update the database so there's nothing additional you need to do the way you write to the database it's the same way you update the database lovely okay now let's have a look at the last section of the tutorial where we will learn 
how to delete something from the real time database. And before that, can I ask you to please take a moment and like the video if you learned something today and consider subscribing the channel and do let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Okay, with that out of the window, let's go and first create a delete button. So I'm gonna copy all the all of this, paste it instead of success. I'm gonna say danger, and I'll say handle delete. We have not created this function, so let's go and create that. We will say const. I'm gonna copy everything from get updated user because it's gonna be more or less same. Now here, of course, we need the database. Of course, we need the reference, but we do not want the value as of now. So I'm gonna delete this. What we want here is to remove the data, and this only needs one input, one argument, and that needs to be the that has to be the reference, dbref like that, and remove needs to be imported from Firebase database like this, read profile like this. If I go back to my Firebase database, you see that I have one user within that I've got address, bio, and things like that. Now, if I go back and click on delete profile. You'll see now it says bio not available, address not available. That is because we have deleted that particular node from the database. We are still able to see the icon and you know user is logged in. If I go to home page, I still can see it's okay to be logical. That is because all that data is coming from the authentication, but real time real time database does not have anything as of now. I think that concludes uh, all the learning points that we wanted to learn in this video. Couple of more things in terms of aesthetics. If you want to stay for a moment, I'm gonna show you super quick. So if I go to icons, I love icons, and I can go and look for delete, for example. Um, I can take a trash, copy this, and I can paste it here, cut it, bring it inside, and call it class name. And probably I could do same here, here. So let's just say user, maybe this one, copy this and paste it here and put it inside and make it class name and we would like both of these buttons to have margins in the x-axis of two so that they are not you know kissing each other like that okay and i think this should give you this should enable you with all the tools and techniques that you need to know in order to build beautiful looking websites and i hope you learned a lot today i'm going to see you in the next video until then have a nice day cheers